Hello, hello everyone and welcome. Uh, welcome to uh, our third day of uh, Connecting Online. This is the fifth year of Connecting Online and it's, it's so exciting to have uh, two colleagues that I'm uh, so happy to see uh, online right now. Uh, and that is Dr. Phil and Dr. Antonio. So welcome uh, doctors. Uh, as you can see, this is our fourth year, as I've said, and uh, these are the presenters from around the globe. It's really exciting. I don't want to talk too much about it, but uh, we are planning on continuing the tradition of writing chapters after uh, the event. This is a very sought after event. A lot of universities apparently are requiring their students, believe it or not, to join Connecting Online. So it uh, it must be the presenters who are making such a huge difference uh, to the conference. So we're going to get started. Uh, the topic is Connecting Online to Improve Instructional Learning. As I said in the previous class, this is actually true technology. So when we talk about whether technology is good, whether it's not good, here are two experts who actually use it and not only talk about it. So that's why I think it's really important to hear you guys. So thank you. If you'd like to please introduce yourselves and um, go ahead. I'll mute my mic and let you go. Okay, hi. Hello, everyone. This is Antonio Tovar. I'm actually in Chicago, so quite cold over here. I'm really excited in this part of this, as Mary mentioned. You and I, we've been probably the beginning of we've been teaching for about uh, 15, 15 years in mind and we were excited about uh, sharing our experiences and our, and our findings with you guys. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Dr. Phil and um, I, I'm getting a lot of interference here. I don't know why. But anyway, I'll just try to go up go ahead in spite of uh, adversity. That's sometimes what you have to do with technology. And um, I want to welcome you to our session. Okay, hi. Uh, uh, hello, everybody. This is Antonio Tovar. Um, uh, I'm actually in Chicago, so it's quite cold over here right now. Um, I'm very excited uh, in being part of this. Uh, as Nelly mentioned, Bill and I, we've been uh, on uh, professor online since probably the beginning of, of uh, and we've been teaching for about uh, 13 15 years online and, and on ground sorry uh, and uh, we're very excited about sorry, uh, sharing um, our experiences and that's our, okay and our findings uh, can i make guys. a suggestion there uh antonio when phil speaks can you mute your mic and that then we won't hear any echoes good morning just i'm dr fine. phil and vice versa okay, and so. um I, uh, Phil, when, uh, I'm getting a lot of interference here. I don't know why. But uh, anyway, I'll just Thank try you. to go go ahead in spite of uh, adversity. That's sometimes what you have to do with technology. And um, I want to welcome you to our session. Um, as Dr. Antonio said, um, I've been teaching for about 14 years, and I got in right on the ground floor at the time um, that this was becoming... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm having so much difficulty with headsets, I'm going to try to unplug it and see if that makes a difference. Can you still hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Bill. Yes, we can hear you, Bill. Okay, great. I'm sorry, my headsets don't work quite right because... Uh, Okay, can you hear me now? All right, good. Well, let's get started. Enough about us, you know, because this is more about you. And we're going to talk about connecting online to improve instructional learning. And we're just going to, you know, take you some th things that, you know, we're going to touch on. And we're going to, we like to do this kind of in an interactive way. So Dr. Antonio and myself, we're going to kind of go back and forth. And what we'd like is, if you have questions, please feel free to enter them in the chat box. 
but you know, hold off for an answer till the end. We'll try to address your questions all at the end. Either if you, you do it in chat or if you want to raise your hand at the end, we can address it that way as well. Okay, so with no further ado, we want to talk about um, technology, the idea of you know being able to bounce ideas off of one another. And that's how we feel like technology is a little bit different than the traditional approach. Um, the traditional approach, of course, uses things like Bloom's taxonomy and Gagne's events of instruction. And we use them here, it's just that, you know, we may use them a little bit different. Uh, for example, uh, Gagne's events of instruction, uh, we, it talks about how to gain attention and how to inform learners of the learning objectives. We still do that online. We just may do it a little differently. We also want to stimulate any prior learning that you've had and share those experiences with each other. Um, and then we have different ways of presenting content. And I'm going to talk about a few a little later. I use YouTube extensively because I, I feel for, I teach finance, and a lot of learners tell me they can't learn it unless they can see how to do it. So that's why I use YouTube. Um, we also have um, guidance we want to give students, and we think it's effective that way as, as well. So all the time that we're, we're in our classes, we're always trying to um, you know, tell where people are at and assess their performance. So those are just some of the ways that you know, we can bounce things off one another and make things better. And Dr. Antonio, would you like to add to that? Okay, I just want to uh, make sure there's a sound check again uh, with everybody. I think it's important uh, uh, throughout our careers, we have found that it, it is very critical that we use technology that's applicable. Uh, nowadays, there's so much technology out there, so many tools out there, and uh, it, it is important uh, to make sure the learners uh, and, and the instructor they feel comfortable with the technology being used out there and that it's, it's usable and instead of uh, getting in the way of learning it has to um, uh, help the student in the learning process as opposed to hindering the student. So that's one of the important points that uh, um, I'd like to point out, Dr. Phil. I was trying to mute my mic, you know, while Dr. Antonio was speaking, so everybody could hear him better. But anyway, let's let's keep going here. I think you know we've got some good material to cover. And when we communicate through technology, there's a number of different vehicles we can use to do that. For example, uh, email, or we can use chat, or we can use a video conference. Those are all different ways we can share ideas together and learn from one another. And, um, you know, we can, use, we can use technology as a filter, and it can be either a, a positive or a negative filter. I always like technology because, you know, sometimes students, you know, if they're in a traditional classroom, they're afraid to ask a question because of peer pressure. But, you know, when you're online, there's no fear. Nobody's going to jump out of your screen and, and punch you in the nose or anything like that. So it's it's you know it's a more positive way to filter things and not be afraid to participate. But on the other side, you know, we can use it negatively. If there's other things we don't want others to know about us, we can filter them. You know, we we have things we can hide behind. So that's another use of technology that's a little bit different from the traditional way of doing things. It also helps us to prioritize our tasks and our responses and to hone in to specific uh, participants who have different needs. Um, and I think we get a lot from that because, you know, when you're in a lecture hall at a, at a big university, and I, I used to, uh, you know, teach at one, 
where I had a hundred students, there's no way I could tell where everybody was at in my audience. I mean, it was, if anything, it was a guess. But when you're in online, I think you get a much better idea of, you know, where people are at and what you have to, to do to try to connect with those people. Um, so it helps, it helps connect, it helps prioritize tasks uh, to address different people's needs because everybody is different, not everybody learns the same or is the same. And um, we feel, you know, you still need to be assertive, but you need to do it in a different way. And there's some examples that we've listed here uh, of things that we can use to collaborate. For example, there's Google Sites. There's, I'm sure all of you are familiar with Facebook. Um, there's uh, Yammer, WizIQ, Glassboard, Groups. All are different ways to connect with people in different ways. So, Dr. Antonio, would you like to add what I said? Just and emphasizing the uh, the uh, the uh, contextual technology for for every situation because especially we're online uh, and we're we're crossing boundaries we we're crossing geographical boundaries we're we're crossing time boundaries and some technology may be applicable to somebody in one place and and not applicable to somebody in another place so we got to find that balance and that the right technology that's applicable to that uh, uh, audience at that time. They're all very good points, and so we'll move on to the next slide. Um, and according to some of the research that I, I want to give credit where credit is due, this came from Dr. Antonio, uh, effective online collaboration and learning requires three essential components, a, a social presence, you know, where we can interact as people and talk to one another, you know, as individuals, Cognitive presence, you know, we all have to be thinking together and along the same lines. A teacher presence, you know, what does the teacher add uh, to provide direction, you know, to accomplish the goals and objectives for the course? So those are some things um, that help put that in context. And Dr. Antonio, can you add to that? Uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, the thing to keep in mind is that uh, having uh, the, the, you know, we were talking about uh, Bloom Taxonomy and Gagnon's uh, events of instruction. Those are very applicable. And I believe, uh, you know, Dr. Phil and I believe that they're even better uh, in having um, uh, a more, like uh, Nelly was showing a blended environment because everybody learns in a different, uh, at a different pace and, and with different uh, tools. And technology really provides that variety of tools that's applicable to a specific student. And that will uh, make learning more effective as well. Unmute my mic. Those are all very good points, and we want to move on. So we've noted that studies have shown that experiencing knowledge through collaboration increases learning and retention. And learner interaction and collaboration provides opportunities uh, to build an online learning community. And um, you know, it, it provides a you know, a, a place where students can interact and do it informally. You know, I think the traditional approach is much more formal and people, you know, get a little stiff and they're afraid to ask a question. But here it's more like having fun, I think, than it, it is in a traditional setting, you know, where you wait for the uh, professor to acknowledge you and then you can respond. So I like the informality of it. It's also a way to share you know, practical ideas and share different experiences we had. And I think it's wonderful. I mean, today, I mean, here here we are in the United States, and, and many of you are in Europe or in Asia or across the world, and, we're, and, and it just adds so much more depth that we wouldn't have otherwise. So I think that gives us a competitive advantage and helps us improve our effectiveness. So, Dr. Antonio, what do you think? 
it goes to the point of really creating what, what we call uh, communities of learning. And they're, they're really global communities of learning, and, and technology definitely mm -hmm. has, uh, has allowed us to do that. And uh, you know, I'm very excited all the time because uh, it, it's, uh, you learn new things every day. Um, uh, new technologies come out, like somebody mentioned in the chat uh, area. Technologies are coming up every day, so our job as instructors is to make sure that uh, we're we're uh, learning those new technologies. We're adapting those new technologies to uh, to create those communities of learning out there that uh, really reach uh, around the world. Right. Well, I think it. Uh, I got it. It's true. You know, uh, we are communicating across the world, and and. You know, it's almost a scary idea, but yet it's a it's a fun idea that we're expanding our base. Um, so let's move on to the next slide, and we're going to talk about technology integration, and it assists us in integrating Bloom's tax taxonomy and and using the right technology to deliver the content and share the knowledge that you know is part of our objectives and goals. Um, you know, it could be relevant to some learners and usable to some and not to others. Um, but it's not a challenge, you know. I don't think it interferes in any way with the learning pro process. Not to say that you don't, we don't have some technological difficulties like I do remembering to mute my mic. But, uh, no, that's part of the learning process itself is how do you use a technology and how do you get good at uh, at, at doing a session like this. You know, I don't think of myself as good by any means, but um, I always learn from these sessions, and I think that's what, what it's all about. So we can use uh, things like social media to integrate technology and, uh, and to, you know, things like video conferences or um, blogs or YouTube. Like I said, I use a lot of YouTube, and I find it very effective, you know, to watch a, a short five-minute YouTube, and it, it's it's just a discussion starter. You know, after we watch a video, either together or on our own, you know, we can discuss it. We can have some pretty good conversations. So I love to use YouTube. In fact, in my classes, I start every one of my discussions with a YouTube because I find it very effective. Um, it's also very effective to use a technology to ask questions and not be afraid of asking questions. And I think that's so important because the Socratic approach is very effective, as we all know. Any of those who have taught before, asking questions is what the Socratic method is all about. And so a user has to get comfortable with technology and know how to use these tools. So Dr. Antonio, what do you think about all this? I, I keep going back to, to uh, the fact that uh, if, if instructional uh, if instruction and learning are going to be effective, uh, the user must be uh, comfortable with that technology being, uh, being presented and, and utilized during the process. Um, just to, to, to give you guys some, some uh, background, we, we teach at a university where we're required to have a video of ourselves you know, explaining the class and making sure that everybody's comfortable. So I noticed somebody, Tom, saying that it's a great icebreaker. And it is. Technology a lot of times provides a better way because there's so many different ways of getting to the students and, and, and getting their interest in the, uh, in the information that's being presented. And it really provides so many different dimensions in the learning process. Uh, and, and at the end, uh, I believe that this, the learner is the one that benefits because they find the best way for them to learn. I know that uh, uh, online learning communities, uh, 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 most of us have like what we do, uh, and, and that provides us anytime, anywhere, uh, uh, knowledge and, and you know, capabilities of learning. about, uh, um, you know, whether or not uh, YouTubes are effective in teaching uh, high school math. And I would say, yes, they are. Uh, 
I know Khan Academy is doing that in Southern California, and I've watched several of Cellcon's videos, and I love them. I, I think they're effective because they allow you to start and stop and replay if you don't understand something. And um, for that reason, I find them you know, very effective. Not everybody gets it the first time, especially when you're talking you know, about difficult equations and things like that. So I find them very, very effective. OK, so let's continue on here. Um, we can use uh, technology, uh, you know, f for a number of things, um, and there's a lot of, of available collaborative tools, which we'll provide a, a link to later, um, so that in your community of learning, you can use some of these things. You know, just just briefly, some of the ones that we have available are uh, video conferencing, co-browsing screen sharing, mind mapping, and diagramming. We have uh, group communication, social network platforms, whiteboarding, um, which I love because I love to write on the screen. And I think Dr. Antonio does as well. Um, we were just doing that yesterday, as a matter of fact. Uh, collaborative writing. I think of myself as a pretty good writer and you know um, I know a lot of people have challenges with writing so if there's things I can do to help people improve their writing I'd like to do that we also have chat uh, we can share documents together and work on them together I know I know we've done that in the past and I find that very effective um, we can do instant messaging which dr. Antonio knows that I absolutely adhor because um, I find that people use uh, hieroglyphics or they're, you know, it's difficult to interpret. So when somebody sends me a text, the first thing I do is I call them back on the telephone. Now, I don't want you all to start sending me a text because I, I can't possibly answer them all, and I won't. But normally, if, if I know somebody well enough and I want to get back to them, like Dr. Antonio, I'll pick up the phone and call him. So those are just some of the tools that we have available. And uh, Dr. Antonio, do you want to add any? I, I think that that you know it, it really goes back to to and we all know we're we're online right now and and there are so many tools out there. There are so many things that uh, a lot of times we can get overwhelmed with that technology. So it is, it is important that we find the right technology to, to do that. As, as uh, Dr. Phil noted, he doesn't like texting. He doesn't like uh, those things. So, but he, he loves uh, Google Hangout and with IQ. So we always use it all the time to, to do what we do. And, uh, uh, so, uh, therefore, technology needs to be contextual to, to uh, the audience and to be able to uh, uh, make sure that learning takes place. Uh, what we experience uh, in our years of uh, uh, instruction is that people get overwhelmed or they get challenged so much with technology that sometimes they abandon learning. And obviously, that's something that we like to, to improve on and make sure that technology is applicable and, and is being used uh, the right way. Forget about these tools. You know, it becomes kind of second hat, and we just use them uh, by nature after a while, and and that's a good thing. You know, because that means we're learning different tools. Um, and you know, part of the idea, and we're going to move to the next slide here, is that we want to share our ideas together in a safe environment, and and technology really offers us the ability to collaborate with different people from all parts of the world. And there's no geographic boundaries or time limits. We can do it when and where and however long we want to do it for in a safe place. You know, it's not like we're in a work environment where somebody's going to, you know, give us a performance evaluation and say, remember, you, you did this and, you know, and chop you down for it. That's not what this is about. This is about sharing our ideas in an open way and learning from each other. So, 
you know, Bloom's applies here as well. You know, we can we can get to different levels of learning, and uh, you know, everybody might not be on the same level, but you don't have to be afraid to contribute. You know, from whatever level that you're at. Um, and it gives us some protection. You know, there's sometimes there's a delay, and sometimes we're talking face to face, depending on what type of technology that we're using. So, uh, Dr. Antonio, what do you think? Uh, uh, on the on the safe, I know we 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 you and I will end uh, back and forth on using the safe word here. And, and uh, a lot of the attendees, they mentioned that the synchronous and asynchronous uh, learning, um, uh, somebody noted that synchronous learning allows you to really think of, of your answer and being able to, to be uh, effective and finding that knowledge somewhere else before you answer that. So it is a safe environment because, like you noted, Dr. Phil, earlier in the presentation, uh, there's no peer pressure for you to, to uh, uh, you know, ask a question or share an idea that might be a little bit, you know, uh, on, on the left field, but it really provides the, the, a safe environment in terms that you're able to present your ideas and not be afraid of other people, uh, uh, you know, criticizing you because it is a, a really dynamic learning process and environment where everybody's looking at it, everybody is actually um, thinking about it uh, and, and being able to say, yep, I think Phil's idea is great or uh, it doesn't apply here. So the environment itself, technology provides an environment that's uh, more open, safer, and freer in, in terms of uh, sharing ideas and, and taking other, other people's ideas in, into context as well. Because I remember to unmute my mic this time. See, so with practice, it does come. Um, I want to move on to the next slide, which we talked about that technology helps fill in certain gaps that we wouldn't otherwise necessarily be able to, to fill. Um, it assists us to fill gaps in knowledge by having a broader base of people. You, we have more, you know, we can tap into. We talked earlier about things like YouTube and Khan Academy. And you know those are good tools. We also can share the screen with each other. We can work on what's on the screen together. We can share files together through things like Google Drive and Google Hangout. And we can we can talk and bounce ideas back and forth through video conferencing. Um, there's all kinds of ways we can fill gaps that we wouldn't otherwise necessarily fill. And it would be much more difficult, I think, in a traditional setting than, you know, by using the, the correct technology. Um, so we can adapt and we can fill the gaps by adapting with the right technology. Um, sometimes, you know, we might have some negative things. For example, we were talking about this yesterday. Um, oftentimes people become so reliant on the you know that are, are from the internet that they forget that a lot of times what's posted out on the internet is a, just a lot of people's different opinions but you know when you're trying to discover knowledge what you really want to do is you want to look for expert advice that comes from scholars and other people you know who are experts in a particular field and and, and find out what, what they have to share. And there's a number of sources um, that, you know, we encourage you to use. Uh, and and um, we'll share some of them with you in a moment. But those are much better than, um, you know, just doing a web search. If you're going to search on the web, the one place I would definitely recommend is Google Scholar because it will take you to those places. The only downside, and there's always downsides with Google Scholar, is a lot of those sites on Google, Google Scholar will just give you an abstract or a short synopsis of what the, the article's about, and you have to pay for the full article because those are proprietary sources. So that's just an example of a negative. 
Um, but, you know, if you're associated with any university online, I'm sure you're, you have access to, um, you know, an online library. And if you can learn how to do a, a, a Boolean search, which is not difficult, it's not much harder than doing a, a search on Google, uh, you can obtain a lot of really good information that's written by scholars and supported with empirical evidence. And that's what it's all about. So, Dr. Antonio, I've talked far too much, and it's your turn. The, the, the slide, uh, uh, what, what it means, it, it really means so many different things. And I know uh, Joe and I debate in, in what we wanted to show there. But it, it really provides, uh, uh, it fills the gaps in, 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 in terms of, of uh, distance and time. And also, we, we got into a conversation, uh, Dr. Phil and I, in Jersey. When you're teaching a class, when you have an audience, each student has a different level of literacy, meaning that there are different places in, 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 the, in the time, uh, the learning continuum. And, and technology, the online environment, offers uh, the ability to fill that gap between one student and the next in terms of knowledge and in terms of understanding because um, uh, especially if it is synchronous learning where you, you get time in between uh, topics to uh, think about, to research about that specific question or, or topic. The idea that once you have a, a consistent literacy level in, in your audience, then learning becomes more effective. and, and and at least in my view, it's my opinion, like Phil said, you know, we all have opinions, is that if everybody is closest to that learning level, that literacy level, the learning becomes more efficient and effective uh, when you collaborate on the online communities. efficiency by grading online um, and you know I can't envision that possibly having in a, happening in a traditional setting in a traditional setting you know everything is kind of top down comes from the lecture and, and uh, um, you know it's up to you to remember it and, and I know when I was in a lecture hall with a hundred students I hate to say it students fall asleep but you know you get a class at eight o'clock in the morning and you know, people are tired from the night before. It's it's hard to connect. So with that, let's just move on to the next slide. I don't want to get uh, too far behind here. And we want to also talk about technology allowing us to discover knowledge when you need it, instead of you know just at a particular time. Um, it's it. There's no boundaries. Um, it's available 24/7, and whenever you, when you need it, and it, you know, it's at your fingertips. I don't, I've never uh, seen the internet uh, shut down yet. I have seen universities shut down, but I've never seen the internet turn it, turn off. So um, that's, you know, a, a big benefit. And you know, we have information that's available in different venues because some people like to see it. Some people like to hear it. Some people like to do it. And we can do that with technology. You know, we have videos. We have audios. Um, you know, we can, we can work together and do things together and share information together. And those are all different venues uh, for uh, learning information and discovering new knowledge. Um, we have places where we can store things. For example, we, you know, there's Google Drive, or what's the other one? I can't think of it off the top of my head. We used to use it a lot. Dropbox. Um, and, you know, those are all good places where we can share files and, and save it, you know, so when we get back together, you know, we, we have access to things that we want to come back to. And we don't learn in a vacuum. We learn together. You know, unlike in the lecture hall where, you know, the the lecturer stands in the front of the class and, you know, it's up to you, you know, when you're tired from the night before uh, to try to remember everything that the, the lecturer says in the lecture hall. So I think those are some big benefits. What do you think, Dr. Antonio? 
uh, uh, it goes back. I, I'm always very cautious about uh, what's online, and you know we have people seen more shows. <laughs> you know, I saw it on the internet, so it must be true. And and um, one of the disadvantages of having all this information in a in a in a, in a public place like the internet or a, a readily available place is that it may not be accurate information. So um, I I always stress my students to use the, the university library. Uh, to to use you know peer review articles, good resources uh, when they write their papers because I as far as I, I Wikipedia is one example and I know we have different opinions. Um, uh, I don't allow them to use Wikipedia because most of those articles uh, may not come from good sources. I'm not saying it's a, it's a bad place, but uh, it's still it's still evolving basically. Um, uh, so it is important to realize that uh, be, because of knowledge that's out there, and so is, it is so readily available, it may not be accurate knowledge, and we want to be careful about that. And we must stress that to our students, uh, which I do so every time, to make sure that um, their sources are accurate and that uh, they're able to substantiate their, their thoughts um, with uh, peer review articles from, from libraries. though with with my student is wiki as long as they support it with other sources that are peer-reviewed you know the wiki is basically just a, a collaboration of different people's ideas and there's nothing wrong with it it's just that every once in a while somebody will post some bad information without checking it first and that's the problem with a wiki so if you're going to use information from a, a, a wiki um, you know, make sure that you support it or, or find something that supports it to make sure that it's accurate. So let's move on. Um, the next thing we wanted to talk about is I think, you know, using technology helps us make efficient use of time. We don't have to drive to a library. We don't have to go anywhere. We don't have to be at a certain place at a certain time. We can use it where we want it when we want it and with whoever we want to use it so it gives us a lot of flexibility and you know although it can be overwhelming and frustrating to some at first um, when you start to learn how to use it it, it really, really makes your life a lot better I can't imagine doing some of the stuff I I do today, you know, before the internet. And I'm not a young man, you know, I remember, you know, when I was studying accounting, I had all these spreadsheets and I, I, I went in, in my room, locked myself in the room, I had these spreadsheets all over my bed and I was trying to read all this stuff and go back and make sense of, it was tough. Today we have things like, you know, Excel and spreadsheets and, you know, everything is in a tab and it's nicely organized. And you know I don't have to do that anymore. It was, it's it's a lot it's a lot more efficient, and it helps us you know tie into you know some of the things from Bloom's taxonomy, you know helps us analyze information as a doctor. It helps us create new information because that's what being a doctor is all about is to create new information. And if we can use the information efficiently, it helps us do that. Um, also. Technology helps us assess the proficiency of different learners. Like Dr. Antonio said earlier, not everybody's always at the same level, and that's one of the biggest challenges in the classroom is trying to get everybody together on the same page. Well, it's not always possible, so it's it's more important to find out where people are at and try to hone in to what their needs are. So what do you think, Dr. Antonio? What's your experience? I always like to play a devil's advocate uh, uh, in terms of what technology is. And, and I've been using technology for 25 years, so I, I, I know what it is, and I, I love technology. Um, I was uh, reading some of the comments, and uh, a lot of uh, our degrees may, may not have been possible without technology available, making it easier for us to learn. But 
what I've experienced with uh, years of uh, online instruction is that you need discipline. Really, you need discipline to be able to use technology effectively. Uh, again, like I noted earlier, there there's so many tools out there on the internet. There's so many things you're doing, and and people get distracted. I I I've noticed a lot of my students they get distracted with with technology, and they're not using the uh, the, the the way they should be using it. So um, you always want to caution people in terms of if the technology starts giving you a lot of challenges, then that may not be the, the, the best technology you, you have to use or you need to use because it's not really contributing to your learning process. Uh, and so we just need to be careful about technology, uh, uh, using it the right way, not getting distracted by it uh, or other technologies you're sitting on your computer. And you know, just being able to use that time effectively uh, to to uh, uh, take advantage of, of what's out there in terms of technology and tools. Uh, to take advantage of, you know, and then touched on all the tools that are available out there. Um, there's just so much and, you know, every time I interact with people, I always learn some new ones. Um, and that's, that leads us to the next thing is, you know, what's important about the internet and technology is it allows us to collaborate in teams, unlike really what we ever could do before. I remember, you know, when I got my MBA, that was probably my first experience with a team. And, you know, it was difficult. We were from, from all over and we had to decide when we were going to meet, how we were going to meet, and, you know, how we were going to work on things together. And it wasn't, it wasn't like now. We didn't have the Internet. Um, we had computers, but they were just, you know, they were very primitive at that time. You know, you had a link with it. Um, it was kind of like I remember when I got my first computer, it came in a box and it had an instruction page and it said, okay, you attach all these wires together and then you pray at the end and hope everything works. And I was so excited when my first computer worked because I built it myself. But today, you know, it's a little different. You know, we can collaborate. You know, we can share things together. Well, what do you think this step is and how, do, how, can, we, how can we accomplish this goal? And so I wasn't exposed to that. You know, I'm probably showing my age all here, but that's okay. Um, I think we can learn from it. Um, I think it's so much more efficient, you know, when we can get together online and, and we can use these different tools and we all have different experience with different tools. And when we put this all together, everything starts to come together and we can achieve our goals in a more effective way. So, you know, we've talked about, you know, some of the tools, you know, I'm not going to read them, but um, I just find collaboration is, is so much better and it, it teaches us other lessons too. It teaches us how to interact with other people, which we never learned before, you know, in a traditional setting, you know, it's kind of like, here it is, you're on your own, here's your text, you learn it and bring it back and spit it out. Well, that's not true, you know in online learning you know we're in this together we're all going to get a grade and it depends on how each of us interacts with one another and we build synergy that way in other words um the sum of the total is greater than this you know the individual parts and i you know i find that such a big advantage um that never was there before what do you think dr antonio So it's really brought about uh, the, the, the team concept a little more uh, strongly because, as we all know, uh, in, in real life scenarios, you're always contributing with somebody else, collaborating with somebody else uh, to, to get an idea going, to, to, to even learn the process. The, um, uh, uh, the, the key point is here is that technology will allow you to, to uh, uh, work in a team better to be able to to uh, collaborate better across boundaries across geographical boundaries and time boundaries and really you know i'm, I'm reading some of the uh, uh chat messages there it really provides a more 
personal experience because there are so many tools to collaborate with and, and learning becomes very effective in a team environment. And, and let's face it, we're not alone in the world. There, there, there are humans everywhere. So we must be able to work with others um, uh, using the tools to make it much, much better. And I think the thing we want to talk about is relishing our epiphanies. And what do I mean by that? Um, well, you know, we've just talked about collaborating and working together in teams and having joint goals and creating synergy. Well, when it's all said and done, we want to celebrate our achievements together. And I think when that, it, it helps us boost our confidence level and 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 uh, know that we've been successful working with other people and um, happiness is only real when it's shared and that's a citation uh, that uh, Dr. Antonio contributed um, I'm not sure where it came from otherwise I would give you a source but I think that's true I think there's 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 more to celebrate you know when when more people contribute to a process than if it's strictly on our own. You know, you might not feel that way, but, I, you know, I know I've been in some really good teams and some really bad teams, and when you get in a really good team and um, you get some good outcome at the end, you feel really good about yourself. And I think that's what this is all about. You want to feel good about what you're doing, and, you know, how, how do you complement your skills with the skills from other people and how do they complement their skills with your skills everybody has different strengths and you know it brings out the strengths in different people and it also teaches people how to work on you know maybe what they need a little help in so by celebrating what what a group does together I think is the ultimate epiphany so what do you think Dr. Antonio At, uh, Dr. Phil is 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 we we all we all have experienced uh, uh, team building exercises and working in teams, and and I believe that the internet and has brought the the world together. It has made the world smaller. So therefore, uh, what you want to do is is find those tools that will make your team learning process much much better. And obviously, as you all know, we learn from each other. We, somebody has an idea, we have an idea, we share it together, and this is this is so great. I, I, I can't even uh, uh, say how, how great it is I because I don't have to travel to China to share my idea with somebody. Technology makes oh, that we available. Hear you. We hear you, Phil. And, great. and it is a great process. The idea is that what we're trying to accomplish here is is using the right technology for the right purpose. And as, as we, we all know, not all technology um, uh, works uh, for everybody. You, you got to find your right technology. And I'm going to share a link on the chat. That's the, uh, the uh, it's a link where uh, you can find a lot of tools in there. It, it provides a whole bunch of, of listings of what tools are, where they are, and what they do for you. I'm hoping that um, you can find that link useful. Get in the group and people are just lazy. I've been there. I've done that. I know in my doctoral work, I I, I want to bring up a, a little story. I had um, a gentleman who was extremely bright but couldn't write. Right in my group, and I always. Um, I always 
it's not your uh, video. It was Phil. Volunteer can you the um, editor? Can you disable your video because we're not? Uh, your internet Bruce, connection is cutting because your video is taking too much bandwidth. Can you uh, disable strengths. your video by clicking on the uh, webcam icon? And I think that you know we had two three days to edit before we had to turn in our. Phil, can you? Um simply disable your video by Assignment. clicking on the icon I, the webcam icon just click on it once the way you muted the I would get the mic work before work on it. do the same thing on the webcam and then the system will be faster and i think that made me so much better as Okay, does there anything besides my voice? This is Nelly. Uh, it is not Phil. Either having that me. experience. Uh, so it looks like uh, we're losing connection. Yes. Am I frozen too? Because it's really cold here. If I am, <laughs> we hear you, but there's a delay. So we're not going to get this uh, fixed right now. Okay, I think. Phil, can you hear me now? Uh, you disabled your you there? video, which is great. But. It's no, you haven't. All right, everybody. Um, we're going to cut this short. Phil and Antonio, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Tom is going to add a link. Tom is going to add a link to the chat box so we can continue the discussions. There, thank you, Tom. You're the best. Um, thank you for moving the slides. Antonio, is that you talking there? Okay, great, Antonio. I think, yeah, thank you. Go ahead. I'll just mute my mic and let you continue. So I just wanted to provide this reference that's there for everybody in the class. I know that we do follow these references. If you're interested, I'm not hearing anybody. Uh, those are the references. Uh, really thank you guys for attending the course. I think uh, this is all forever. Technology is great. We love technology doing that. Uh, uh, we're in it. Everybody. You can come back in now. And feel free to, there's the link if you can Again, I, I'm and also hearing. copy chat everybody. And um, we'll see you in the next class with Dr. Anything. Kurt Bonk from Indiana University. He's going to be talking about some great things that I'm sure will interest everyone. So Antonio well, and Phil honor. and everyone, join us. Thank you so much. Loved it. Yes, yes Loved it's me. It. I wanted to provide Thank this. You. And we'll be seeing more of uh, Dr. Phil and Dr. Antonio at the Moodle MOOC. So stay tuned. Okay, I just wanted to provide more. those references there for everybody in the class. I know that we just saw those references. So if you're interested in uh, 